songbooks tonight. We'll get started here with church, page 375 in your hymn book. Are you thankful for air conditioning this evening? Let's all stand, sing it, page 375 on that first verse. Ready? Work for the night is coming. be done for the Lord these days and uh, the young folks that's why we sing this song we need to work while we can on these days we can't and then uh, the Lord will be here or we'll be in heaven and uh, so work while we can amen hey thanks for being in church tonight appreciate your faithfulness on a Wednesday and sure look forward to the Bible study tonight and our prayer time and so let's get started with the word of prayer our father we come to you thank you so much for this day Lord uh, you've blessed us with so many things and, uh, Lord, sometimes it's good to just sit down and count our blessings. Lord, think about uh, all the things that you've done for us. Lord, I pray tonight that you would, Lord, meet with us as we have gathered here on purpose. Lord, we're here in your house. Lord, we want to uh, hear from heaven tonight. Lord, we uh, pray that you would uh, just help us to have, uh, Lord, just uh, listening ears tonight. And Lord, that we would be able to leave here with something that will help us throughout the week. Lord, it will encourage us, strengthen us. Lord, we just uh, thank you for this place. I pray that you bless all that's said and done tonight. We love you, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Let's see if anybody needs a prayer card to fill out tonight. Anybody need a prayer card to fill out? All right, very good. Uh, work on those prayer cards here, and we'll collect them in our offering in just a moment. And so I uh, look forward to our prayer time. Let me mention this before the young people uh, head out. This Sunday is, uh, we're calling it Friend and Family Sunday, and we want everyone to invite a friend or a family member to be in church with them this Sunday. We we'll look forward to a good Sunday morning service. After the service, we are going to have a picnic uh, lunch here at the church for whoever wants to stay. You don't have to, uh, but we're just making, uh, making that available. We're going to have some inflatables for the young people outside, and, of course, uh, the, um, the games and things that will be out there with that. And then we are going to have uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, and french fries is what the church is going to provide. If you want to bring, you know, a dessert or a side of potato salad, uh, that's up to you. Uh, you know, I'm not, not one to turn away food. So, uh, But we want to keep it simple and not a lot of work for anybody. And uh, so we'll, the fellowship hall will be open to eat in. And obviously, we'll have table a table out front with hot dogs for the kids and maybe a few hamburgers if they want that. And they can just eat on the run. And, and uh, I don't know for sure uh, how I'm going to do things, but uh, as you come in Sunday morning, you might just uh, keep in mind we might have part of this parking closed off to try to keep it. Uh, obviously, we need to put the inflatables on the concrete. 
And so just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe if you want, some folks want to park back here and fill up this parking area would be good. And uh, the ones that can walk a little bit, maybe park out in the gravel if you don't mind. Save the close spots for the elderly folks and those that uh, need the close spots. That would be great. So I want to mention that to the young people. Make sure you're here Sunday morning and invite a friend, and we'll look forward to a good day. We'll have an early afternoon service uh, once we're done uh, with our picnic. We'll just come back in here for a few minutes, and then we'll call it a day after that. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Well, let's go ahead and let the Patch Club head on out. And so you all can stand and head out with Miss Miller. All right, I'll make this announcement while they're heading out. We had our uh, first vacation Bible school meeting on Sunday night. Uh, just a very simple uh, introductory meeting, giving out the dates and getting workers signed up. And I know several folks weren't here Sunday night, so I'm going to make this announcement over the next couple services and to try to get everyone signed up. So if you would like to help Vacation Bible School, we could use the help, and uh, we want to get you signed up. Uh, so see me after church tonight. I'll give you a sign-up card. We are doing the T-shirts for all the workers, and that's kind of one of the more important reasons for getting signed up now so we can get those ordered. Um, so uh, see me after church tonight. Uh, let me know if you've talked to somebody and you know that they uh, want to help uh, but just haven't been able to get signed up yet. Uh, or if you just want a t-shirt, you're welcome to order a t-shirt and, and then be a part of, of the excitement that way with having the t-shirt. And, and so let me know there. Uh, they'll be around $10. We don't have an exact price till we order those, but it'll be around $10 for the t-shirt. And so I wanted to mention that. And then uh, let's not forget about Father's Day, just a, about a week and a half away, and invite someone to come. I tell you what, if you have not uh, heard Dr. Tom Williams speak or preach before, I, I believe you'll be helped. I believe you'll be encouraged. Uh, his story is a pretty amazing story of God's uh, just uh, grace, God providing their needs. As he has, uh, I think now, uh, had two of his wives uh, pass away and, and in heaven now. And the Lord has been very gracious to him. He's been preaching for a long time in evangelism. And so he'll be with us all day on that day. Um, you, you'll enjoy that. So I encourage you to invite somebody to come. Uh, maybe somebody you know that's hurting. Uh, someone you know that uh, really just uh, is having a tough time. Say, I've got the answer for you. I believe if you'll come and hear this guest speaker, I believe you'll be helped. And, and I really, truly believe that he will be a blessing. And so uh, let's, let's have a good day on Father's Day Sunday. We enjoyed our missions moment uh, Sunday night with uh, Brother Nathan. I always said it Kenoshita, but I think he pronounced it Kenoshita. Is that right? Kenoshita. And so I think I was saying it wrong over in Japan. And I praise the Lord for the Internet, for the technology. I was a little nervous going into the, the uh, meeting Sunday night. But he was able to be with us live and, and had a good, a good update. And if you weren't able to be here, I encourage you to go uh, watch that service. Um, and Darren did a good job with being able to patch that into the live video. So it's very clear on, on the Facebook or YouTube. And you can watch that and uh, pray for him. That'd be uh, encouraging and helpful, uh, a blessing to him. We do have some um, new tracks that have come in. Um, just really just updated the picture uh, on on this card uh, uh, with our church building updated that and um, and then I updated my picture I've gotten uglier so I thought I better be accurate with my picture and um, update that we've got just a few of the old ones left so as soon as they're gone out of the track rack literally whatever's in there is all we have left we'll put the new ones out so let's be faithful and and keep passing out the tracks, and we'll look forward to getting the new ones. I've already put some other um, tracks out, and, and folks have been passing those out, so appreciate that. And then lastly, I'll just uh, say this. We're trying to get some work done around the church, and I have had uh, one or two folks help out. Another say, uh, I plan to come, I think, this weekend and do some extra cleaning. So if you can help, uh, we, we can use some help. Uh, we're able to get the gutters cleaned out all on all the buildings, and uh, we're able to wash uh, the church vehicles 
and uh, but we still have more work to do outside some power washing and uh, then inside cleaning and some uh, minor uh, painting here and there so if you could help that'd be a blessing uh, just trying to get things cleaned up here around the church let's go ahead and uh, take our song books we'll sing another song and then we'll um, take up our offering uh, as soon as this song is finished page 66 turn in your song book there at calvary and we'll have uh, first and last verse of this song I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. and prayer cards and uh, appreciate your faithfulness and your giving let's uh, have a word of prayer we'll take the offering and then put your prayer card in Father thank you for this opportunity to give Lord we thank you for uh, our prayer time Lord it's truly a blessing to be able to come to you in prayer Lord as we put our prayer cards in the offering and get ready for that prayer time after a while Lord we just thank you for it Bless the remainder of our service now, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bibles and we'll get for the, to the Bible study tonight. We'll be in the book of Genesis in chapter 41. Well, Kevin, if you can remind me after church, I have a question that I'd like to ask you, and I'll probably forget, but uh, help me remember that. Finished up the last day of bus driving for the school this week. As a matter of fact, is on yesterday. And uh, so we'll get a little bit of a summer break from that. And I thought, you know, today I thought, uh, I'm not going to set my alarm this morning. I'll, I'll uh, be the first day I've, I'll get to sleep in in a couple months. And I thought, I'm not going to set my alarm and just see what happens. And you know exactly what happened, don't you? Woke up same time, same place, wide awake, raring to go. So I got up and said, well, I guess the Lord wanted me to get up today. But uh, that's something how the old body gets, uh, gets used to getting up. 
Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 41 tonight. Genesis chapter 41. And I want to look at the life of Joseph tonight and probably for a few Wednesday nights. And I recall going through my Bible reading earlier this year, reading through Genesis, obviously, and coming across this story again. And Joseph, I tell you what, Joseph was a good young man. Joseph was just a godly young man, uh, one that his life was not uh, shadowed by things that, that, uh, that would put a mar on his name. Uh, of course, you know, we understand God doesn't look for perfect people to use, and all through Scripture we find folks with testimonies much like yours, much like mine that we've made our mistakes, but we're thankful for the Lord using us. But I tell you what, when you look at the life of Joseph, uh, you find a person that was faithful to the Lord. And what a blessing he was. I want to look at chapter 41 tonight and look at uh, just a few verses, and we'll, uh, we'll draw a truth from this story here in Genesis 41. Uh, follow along with me in verse number 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years... <laughs> that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. We'll stop uh, at, at that point for right now. The life of Joseph is a life, again, of a young man that would be characterized by faithfulness. But there's also something else about Joseph that I think is important and perhaps helpful to us as we live the Christian life. We obviously, I think, try to be faithful. We understand Joseph's story and will not take time to go through all of his childhood. But he was well loved by his dad, we know that. And his brothers hated him. And Joseph had a life that was filled with dreams. And honestly, these dreams were prophecies that the Lord would give him. And of course, he dreamed that dream when he was a young man. And when he told the dream to his brothers, they hated him. They said, one day you're going to bow down in, uh, to me. I'm going to be superior over you. They just didn't like that. No older brother would like his younger brother telling him that. They thought to kill him, but then they changed their mind. And they end up selling him into slavery. And they told his dad that he was dead. They took that coat of many colors and dipped it in blood and took it back to dad and said, I'm sorry, Joseph's gone. We found his coat here, and, uh, and he's gone. Of course, then Joseph ends up going to, uh, to, to be a slave and work there for Pharaoh and work down in Egypt. Throughout his life, we find that he was faithful to the Lord. He's just faithful in the little things. Faithful to do his job. Faithful to be in the right places at the right time. Faithful to, uh, to run from temptation. And just faithful to the Lord. Faithful to his master. But yet one other thing we find about Joseph's life is that he was forgotten. He was forgotten. You know, what an interesting thing to think about Joseph as he lived a faithful life. But yet in his mind being away from his family, uh, not knowing if his dad would ever see him again. Of course, he loved his dad. Being away from all the things that he knew, living a lonely life, 
And perhaps he thought, I'm all alone and I'm forgotten. And Joseph was forgotten by man, but I think it's important to understand this. He wasn't forgotten by God. God knew just where he was. Oh, have you ever been there? I'll be the first to raise my hand tonight and say, yes, I've been there. Lord, I'm trying to be faithful. Lord, I want to follow you. I want to do your will. Sometimes I feel like I'm all alone. I, I'm forgotten. Nobody knows who I am or where I am. But Joseph wasn't forgotten by God. And we understand through his life and through his story, and we're going to look at this tonight, that it takes a great faith to wait on God, to be patient, to just keep on serving him. We talked about that a few weeks ago, waiting on God for the right time. And tonight I want to look at this story and, and draw some truth from this, and it, it'll, I think it will help us tonight. And the, lesson, the title of the lesson tonight is this, God's Will, God's Way, God's win. Oh, think about it. We want God's will in our life, I believe. But we need to make sure we want it God's way and on God's timing, God's win. God's will, God's way, and God's win. We must believe in that. Uh, if, we, if we don't believe in all three of those, uh, they have to all work together. Oh, listen, we're going to go through life where we're going to be disappointed. We're going to go through life where we're going to struggle. We're going to get impatient with God. We're going to start asking questions. Why, Lord? How come? It's got to all work together. God's will, God's way, and God's win. I want you to notice in verse number 1 again. The Bible says, And it came to pass at the end of two full years. Two full years. What does that mean? Well, if we look at this phrase, we talked about uh, how to study the Bible a couple weeks ago on Sunday night. We see that phrase, it came to pass. Uh, what came to pass? Well, we can read in the previous chapter and find out what took place. Now, we're not going to read the whole chapter here, but the story in chapter 40 is a story, again, of a dream that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that they had. Um, there, there was a couple of, of men. It says here that um, in verse number 1 of chapter 40, after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, the chief butlers and the chief bakers. And, and so uh, the Bible says they dreamed a dream, and they had a dream and didn't know what it was. And it come to, to pass that Joseph was able to give the interpretation of that dream. And uh, it came to pass that um, that this this dream happened, and um, you know the, the uh, I believe it was the 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 baker lived, and the butler uh, died, I think, and then then uh, they the the baker ended up being hung. But what happened was this: Joseph was put in prison. And, and here's what I want to get to. While he was in prison, the Bible says he was there for two full years. Now, it was bad enough to be sold into slavery away from his family, away from his dad whom he loved, away from his homeland, away from his family, friends, all that he knew. And, of course, he was... Um, he was falsely accused, and he, he ended up getting thrown into prison because uh, Potiphar's wife said he, uh, he, he came in and he laid with me in, in the bed. And, of course, that wasn't true, but they believed her. And he, he ended up being put in the prison. And imagine while he was in prison, he thought, Lord, what's going on? But I'm, I'm trying to be faithful to you. Lord, I'm trying to do all that I know I should do. Why am I here? Let me, let me say, first of all, God's timing is not changed by our impatience. Sometimes it's so easy to get impatient on the Lord. Now, I tell you what, I'm one. Uh, sometimes I'm impatient. Uh, sometimes there are things that happen, and I, I'm impatient. Now, one thing that I don't like is, is I don't like waiting. 
I don't like waiting. I, I get impatient. But whether it's waiting for, uh, for something to happen or most of the time it's, it's waiting on someone. Uh, man, I, I like to be early. I like to be on time. I like to make sure things are happening. I don't like to wait. We have to understand, according to the Bible, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9, that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And God's ways are not our ways. And I need to learn to have patience. God has a will. And we think about the providence of God, it's, a, it's really an amazing thing. God has a will, and I believe this with all my heart. God's will is going to be accomplished either with or without me. God has a will that, that he wants to take place. Now, I can say, Lord, I, I'm not willing to follow your will. And, Lord, uh, I'm not going to allow you to use me to accomplish your will and to accomplish things for you. And then God might say, okay, fine, I'll use somebody else. I'll, I'll do it this way then. But we understand God's will will be accomplished. But sometimes we get impatient. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, God's will is not our will, and God's timing is not our timing. Remember the story of the Israelites. And they were waiting for the promised Messiah to come. They were looking forward to the, the Messiah coming. And um, God had promised that. Matter of fact, it's, pro it's prophesied in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi. The Messiah will come. But as they got impatient in their waiting, they thought this is going to happen in our lifetime or this is going to happen now. But it, it, they still had to wait. It didn't happen for another 400 years. You know, as we wait for Christ's return, uh, may we understand that we need to be patient. Uh, understand it's all in His timing. Uh, the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. But He says this in John 14, I will come again. He said, I'll come and receive you under myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Read a scripture verse in 2 Peter chapter 3, talking about the coming of Christ. You know, some folks would scoff at that and say, no, nah, it, it's not going to happen. But wait a minute. 2 Peter chapter 3 says this, or verse number 3, 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. You see, there, there are folks that are make fun. Oh, he's not coming back. Wait, he will. It may not be in my timing, but it will be in his timing. Peter says this in 2 Peter 3, verse number 8, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. What does that mean? His timing is not my timing. I, I think the, the quicker we understand that, the better off in life we'll be. The more at peace we will be with things in my life. God's uh, ways aren't our ways. A young convert was praying to the Lord, and he asked God, How long is a hundred years to you? The Lord answered, Oh, about a minute. <laughs> the new believer then asked, Well, how much is a thousand dollars to you? The Lord responded, Well, about a penny. <laughs> he then asked, Lord, would you give me a penny? <laughs> the Lord answered him, Oh, I will in a minute. <laughs> hey, his ways aren't our ways. Timing is not ours. Sometimes we think we got it figured out and we think, oh man, I have no idea what's going on. But here's what the psalmist says in Psalm 27. We shared this verse a few weeks ago. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. What do we, what do we need to understand from this? Don't get discouraged. Uh, if God doesn't do what I want him to do or if he doesn't do something that... Uh, the way that you wanted him to do it or it doesn't do it when you want him to do it know this just keep trusting in the lord just keep waiting on him know that he loves you 
And God has your best interest in mind. God wants to take care of his children. He wants to bless you. He wants to help you. So many times we think, oh, God doesn't care about me. But why would he allow this to happen? Listen, there's a reason for everything. Romans 8, 28, we know all things work together for good. To them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Number one, our timing doesn't, or God's timing is not altered by our impatience. Number two, go back to Genesis 41, and we'll notice <clears throat> verses 1 through 7 about the king, about Pharaoh, that Pharaoh awoke during the night. Uh, let me say this, and I'll explain it. Number two, the king's heart is altered by God's hand. The king's heart is altered by God's hand. We see that Pharaoh awoke twice in one night. You see, what happened was this. God disturbed Pharaoh with a dream. God sent this dream to Pharaoh. He said, you know what, Mr. King Pharaoh? I'm going to stir you up for a minute. Hey, I'm going to wake you up tonight. I'm going to give you something that's going to cause you to lay there and think about it all night long. See, God disturbed his sleep. The Bible says that Pharaoh was so frightened in verse number 8 that his spirit was troubled. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. He said, I, I, I can't figure this thing out. Man, I, I am shaken to the core. What's going on? I can't figure this out. I'll tell you what's going on. God did something to you. You understand God has complete control over everyone, including the kings of the earth. You know why that's why it's easy for me in the course of my lifetime now, I'm just 40 years old, but many people have come in leadership for a few years and then other folks have come into power and, and oh, I guess I've had six or seven presidents in my lifetime, uh, maybe more, I lose track of, of all those. I guess uh, uh, Carter was officially in office when I was born and then that fall, I think is when Reagan got elected in 1980. So you do all the math. Maybe I guess eight, eight or ten. It, it adds up. Hey, you know I can lay my head down at night and sleep like a baby. I know that God is in control. I know that the heart of the hand, uh, that, uh, excuse me, that the heart of the king is in God's hand. Proverbs 21 tells us that the the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. In the eighth plague that came upon Egypt, in Exodus chapter 10, Pharaoh said this, Lord, I have sinned. And he asked for forgiveness. But the Bible says this, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. You say, what happened? I just believe the Bible for what it says. Perhaps Pharaoh was sincerely uh, repentant there. Perhaps he was sincere about him saying, Lord, I'm wrong. I think God reached down and said, you know what? I've got just a couple more things to teach you. And he touched the king's heart. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh said, no, nope, I'm not sorry now. I'm not going to let you go. You say, how'd that happen? God made that happen. In the book of Ezra, God worked in the heart of the kings that held Israel captive. It says in Ezra chapter 1, the Lord in verse 1, The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, who said, The Lord God of heaven hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem. What happened here? God reached down and touched the heart of the king of Persia, and he said, God has charged me to build the house at Jerusalem. God worked in the heart of the king. Later in the book of Ezra, in chapter 6, the Bible says the Lord had made them, which is talking about the Israelites, joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Daniel chapter 4, found out the hard way, though. He ended up having to go out and graze in the fields like a wild animal. He had to find out the hard way that it was God, the Most High, as the Scripture says, that ruleth in the kingdom of men. 
You know, that's why we call God in Revelation chapter, I think it's 19, we call him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why is that? He rules the kings of this land. He can change their heart. We understand that God's timing is not altered by our impatience. We see that in Joseph's life. We see that it's God that can change the heart of the king. And God stirred Pharaoh out of, out of his sleep and woke him up. And then let's notice in the story that he called all the magicians of Egypt in verse number 8 and the wise men. And he told them his dream, but nobody could interpret it for him. Let me say this, number three, man's wisdom is altered by God's wisdom. Man's wisdom is altered by God's wisdom. What, what are you saying? <laughs> to be honest with you, our wisdom compared to God is nothing. The wisest men in the most powerful country on earth at that time, they couldn't even understand what was going on. They couldn't understand what God was saying to Pharaoh in his dreams. It was, it was um, um, foreign to them, like a foreign language. We heard our missionary quote John 3.16 in Japanese. That's foreign to me. I mean, I couldn't understand one word that he was saying. These wise men, the magicians, they couldn't understand a thing about this dream. We understand that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. Therefore, His wisdom is infinite. It's limitless. Man's wisdom isn't infinite. It's finite. We are limited. We have a limited knowledge. We can't ever know everything that God knows. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, God's wisdom is foolishness with lost men. And man's wisdom is foolishness with God. A person that's not saved cannot begin to understand what God is saying. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says in Proverbs 9.10, is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You understand that God's ways are not our ways. You know, let's just trust in God's wisdom. We think we have it all figured out. Make sure that uh, it lines up with what God wants. And then God's faithfulness. And I like this part of the story here. Verses 9 through 14. God's faithfulness is not altered by our lack of understanding. Sometimes we don't understand it, but if we'll just trust God, just say, Lord, I'm with you. I'm holding on. We're in this thing together. God will be faithful. Notice in verse number 9, the Bible says, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. And Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, uh, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was with us a young man, a Hebrew, servants of the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted us his dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he interpreted. And it came to pass, as he interpreted us, so it was, me he restored into mine office, and him he hanged. So the chief butler came to Pharaoh, and he said, Can I remind you of what happened a little while ago about me, the butler, and the baker? Remember that weird dream that we had, we both had? You remember that young man named Joseph that interpreted it? Guess what? He was exactly right in his interpretation. I'm still living. The butler and the baker is now dead. The Bible says in 14, verse 14, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Now, we'll stop right there for a moment. 
Joseph surely thought about his dreams time and time again. He probably wondered, Lord, why have you allowed me to go through so many trials? Lord, why have you allowed me to be falsely accused? Uh, to allow me to be sold into slavery? Lord, why have you allowed me to be put in prison now? No doubt, as Joseph dreamed dreams, I believe he probably thought, I wonder if these things will ever come true. And guess what happened? This butler came. Well, the Bible says it came to pass at the end of two full years. So two years later, Joseph finds out, you know what? That dream was true that I interpreted. It did happen. God is faithful to me. Can we be reminded tonight that the Bible says in 1 Peter 4 that the Lord is a faithful creator? In Revelation 1, he's called the faithful witness. In Revelation 19, the Lord is called uh, faithful and true. And then, of course, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse, uh, verse 23. And we, we get the song from this verse. Great is thy faithfulness. Joseph is a picture of God's will, God's way, and God's win. Let's just be faithful to the Lord. Even though it may seem nobody knows where I am, nobody knows who I am, I'm just little old me here in this place. God knows where you're at. His timing may not be your timing, but he'll prove himself true one day. Can we understand that God's will for our lives is for our good and for the good of others and for his glory? Even though we don't understand it, let's put him first. Say, Lord, I want to give you all the glory. Trust him, even when his way and his win is not my choice. I can tell you in my life, there's been some things that I've looked at and experienced and said, Lord, I sure would not choose it this way, but if that's what you want, I'll go your way. Lord, this timing sure seems kind of odd to me, but if it's your timing, let's just go on through it. I can't tell you three or four people I've talked to this week. Just you'd think, what's going on? I don't know what's going on, but God does. We'll pray in just a moment for little Danny Duke. Just a freak accident that happened on Saturday with a, with a broken knee now and a leg, broken leg. I mean, just out of nowhere. So what happened? What? Hey, listen, I can't explain it. Talked to him on the phone, prayed with him, said, I, I can't tell you why, but God knows. Hey, everything will be all right. Don't worry about it. Just roll with it. Hey, it, it'll be good. It'll all work out. Just keep trusting the Lord. And I tell you what, Joseph rose to power, became second in command, later on ended up being able to bless his family. And we'll probably get to that story here sometime soon. But I thank the Lord for Joseph. What an encouragement, just being faithful to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this message tonight, this story of Joseph. Lord, it's amazing how faithful that you are to us. I taught the young boys this past Sunday in Sunday school, dealing with faithfulness. And I told them, I said, fellas, when you realize that God is faithful to you, even though you're not faithful to him, you finally get that and that finally clicks and it settles in your heart, that'll change who you are. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. Help us to be faithful to you, trusting in you for your perfect will and way. Sure do love you. We ask that you bless our prayer time. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, we'll transition to our prayer time tonight. And uh, we will have an opportunity here in just a moment. If you need to make a correction to the prayer list, you can let me know. But let me give you these.